Chapter 2 An Unfortunate Welcome Alright, let's head for the palace, Drake said. As they made their way to the palace and entered, they saw a tall man with a white cape in the middle of the hall talking to Calypso. Ah, Drake, you're here, as expected on the first day of the summer vacation. Haven, how did you know this would be your first free day? Well, I'm Haven, I know everything. Harold pulled a worried face. In the meantime, Calypso drew all the water out of the clothes of the others towards her, drying them. She smiled kindly and they smiled back. What brings you here? Drake asked. Well, listen up. Something has changed. I didn't want to saddle you up with this the first day you're back in Dragonia, but I'm afraid I have no choice. What is it? We're vulnerable. And Hallam? Hallam's been outmatched. My dear brother was trapped and is somehow being held in his own world, and Mordor is the reason for his imprisonment. You've got to be kidding me. I'm afraid not. Mordor is stronger than I could ever have envisioned. I believe he never showed his true strength in the fight with you and is keeping some of his powers to himself. So he escaped? Not yet. He is trying to. We believe that he will never be able to, but we have been proven wrong before. Actually, once, with our judgment a few weeks ago. So you're saying that everything has been for nothing. The gods thought it was best to trap Mordor in the underworld and now he outplayed your brother and is about to escape and will try to cause havoc to the world once more? I'm afraid so. Aren't the gods supposed to be almighty, beings with perfect judgment? If you want to believe the tales, yes, but there are some things we cannot control. Drake had gotten really angry. This all happened today? Julie asked. This night we received the message, yes, but there is a chance this happened a long while ago. And also, the overpowering of a god is not just child's play. Mordor's strength is growing rapidly. Dragonia has been experiencing these small earthquakes and something is happening to Mordor's ravine. We believe this is something to do with Mordor trying to escape. Who knows what is next, meaning we have to take action now. We? Drake said angrily. Well, you see... Don't even say it, Drake interrupted him. The prophecy is not yet completed, I am afraid. There is a good chance we will need you once more. You said the prophecy was a challenge. That's how I saw it, yes, but a prophecy is a prophecy, and we did not create it. Then change it, erase it. Haven shook his head, nodding no. I'm afraid that's not possible. You're a god, Mordor as human, or was. You have the wrong image of God, Drake. I'm sorry. We will prepare you for the upcoming fight, which I do hope may never happen. It's me again, Drake said, devastated. Again. I wish it wasn't. You don't deserve this. Haven walked towards the door. If you decide to help us, we may be able to save Dragonia once and for all, and with that, the world. As you travel to the underworld, you will face several tasks. These will help you, aboard you, once completed. Let's stop Mordor, shall we? He opened the doors. Jealousy leads to hate. Hate to darkness. Destruction and death. After death, new life. But not for us. When we die, we disappear. It's just death. Haven vanished. Drake, Harrow and Julia, no matter how much they hated this fate, prepared for another journey. They collected their weapons, which were stored in the armory. After that, they gathered in a new room, meant for discussing strategies. Here's a wider map of Rosium for Dragonia, Godania and Duranian, Calypso explained. The sea that separates Dragonia from Godania has always been impossible to cross. It somehow always sends you back. But Haven told me I had to direct you to their temple in Godania, meaning you have to cross it in some way or the other. So why did we not need a tent again? Julia asked. You'll find out once you get there. They all looked at each other. They were all extremely worried about what was going to happen. I am so sorry this had to happen to you all, Calypso said. Well, just Drake, actually, Harrow said. We're just dumb enough to follow, Drake chuckled. I do greatly appreciate it, Harrow, Drake reacted. Good luck to you all, Calypso said with a proud smile as if they were her children. I will prepare Dragonia for the upcoming fight in case it does occur. The three friends left the palace. With their baggage and weapons, they traveled towards the sea. But as they exited the palace, three marvelous creatures were awaiting them. Arian, Drake said enthusiastically. Hank, Harrow said too. Arian started talking. Drake, I'm sorry, we can't come with you. Why not? Drake asked. 
There he goes again, Julia said. No creature can set foot in Godanium. Humans, animals, many have tried, but it's impossible. I do pray that Haven somehow opened the bridge for you, but he came to you, not to us. I think they want the challenges awaiting you to be completed by you and you only, which means I wish you good luck, my friend. Thank you, Arian. They can't come with us, Drake told Hyro and Julia in English. Why not? Julia asked. It's just us. Arian believes the challenges that the gods prepared for us we will have to face ourselves. Only we were invited and might make it across the sea. That sucks, Hyro said. Godania should be safe as long as the gods can protect you, Arian said. We will see what we can do here in the meantime. Arian, Safara and Hank ascended. Bye, Arian, Drake said. Bye, Safara. I'll see you soon, Julia spoke. Bye, Hank. Hank descended again only to bite Harrow in his leg. Ouch! Drake and Julia laughed. Oh, come on. Hank followed the other two, and they flew towards the forest. Afterwards, Drake, Harrow and Julia headed for the sea. As they walked right by the edge of the dark forest, Darren came jumping from behind the dead shrubs, as stealthy as ever. Hey guys, long time not seen. Hey Darren, Drake said. You guys heading for the sea? Did you eavesdrop on us? Julia asked. I just overheard. You know me, I hear everything. I'll just walk along until you kiddos get there, if you don't mind. Darren and the others continued until they made it to the beach. Here we are, Darren said. Well, I have to go. I wish you the best of luck. Until next time. Oh, and tell Adoride I said hi. Adoride? Harrow said confused. But Darren already disappeared into the dark forest. When the three looked across the sea, they couldn't see land anywhere. Just water, stretching out for kilometers. Blue, calm water. Wow, they all sat at the same time, unsure of wanting to cross such an endless abyss.